the Mass this evening is offered for the repose of the souls of Margie and Jim Tonelli, Giuseppe and Amelia Moroni, and Larry Bricca. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. We ask this through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a high great priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sin baptized. They said to him, We can. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. 
but to sit at my right or my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them. Their great ones make their authority over them felt, but it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sometimes imagine, because we need to, we imagine the perfection in others because we want it to be there. So we do this with saints. We imagine a perfection that actually, in the end, takes away their humanity. We say a saint is someone who is close to God. And so therefore, they must have been perfect, wonderful people being very close to God. And we give them a perfection because we need them in our heads to be perfect. But really, is a saint someone who achieved perfection in this world? Is a saint someone who never did anything wrong, never said anything wrong, and never made a mistake? We give saints a perfection because we need to see them as perfect. But then if they really were the perfection that we wish them to be, they would have no relation to us. They would be so far above us. They would be like other angels or like the Blessed Mother in a state of perfection so far removed from us. Actually, when you look at the lives of saints that we know things about, you see human imperfection there in their lives. So you say, well, what made them saints? The struggle. What made them saints is recognizing their imperfection and always struggling to overcome that imperfection. With God, the wonderful thing is it doesn't make any difference what mark you get on the test of life. With God, the effort you put into it is what counts with God. Once upon a time, you know, they do this with priests periodically. They hand you a book and say, teach, like you really know how to do it. And one of the things from my brief time teaching, I remember that there were kids who would sit in the class, um, read a comic book, look at the newspaper, eat their breakfast, and they got 100. Never paid a bit of attention, or seemed to pay attention, or took a note, and they would get 100. I hated those kids. <laughs> <laughs> then there were other kids who would sit there, and they were actually, you made eye contact, they were listening to you, and they were trying to figure out what you were saying. And every once in a while, they would write something. And then the test would come, and you'd say, well, they understood a lot of it, but not 100%. But I used to give them like 10, 15% just for being a good kid. <laughs> just, just for sitting there and making me feel good by paying attention to me. You're going to get 10 or 15 extra points. With God, it's that way. With God, it's not what you accomplish. It's the effort you put into it. So the saints are not people who actually, although we want them to, 
and not for a good reason. I want the saint to be perfect so I can be imperfect. You know, I want, I want to know that there's someone who did it right. Therefore, I don't have to do it right. Uh, their imperfection shines through. And when it shines through, it gives courage to all of us. Oh yeah, they had a struggle. They made mistakes. There was a great, in the field of church law, St. Raymond, he's Rockaway. St. Raymond gathered every parchment that had every law the church ever wrote. And he gathered them and collated them into one book, all the laws of the church. He said, that was a great accomplishment, St. Raymond, but he made a mistake. He then took all the parchments that he gathered and threw them away. It's done. We don't need them anymore. See, I've codified them. No, actually, we would have deleted them to research them, where they came from, and what was your codification right on target? He made a big mistake, and we, we all know him. He's a saint. He's a good man, a holy man. He made a mistake. You threw them all away. You really shouldn't have thrown them all away. Today, in the Gospel, two of the apostles, St. James and St. John, brothers. Their father's name was Zebedee. We know that from the Gospels. They did something very human and very imperfect, and yet it's there in all of us. A little background. James and John, of all the apostles, were probably the wealthiest. Their father did not have a fishing boat the way Andrew and Peter had. Their father had a fleet of fishing boats. So there was wealth, there was steady income, probably supplied all the restaurants on the Sea of Galilee. Zebedee was a wealthy man. James and John, as his sons, stood to inherit all of that. When they left it all, and follow Jesus. Of all the apostles, they gave up the most in doing that. Apparently, in the back of their minds was payback. What do I get back for? Look at what I've done. Look, look at what I've given up for you. For these others, they didn't give up as much as we gave up. What do we get back in return? And then they said, when you go to heaven, can one of us sit at your right, one of us sit at the left? Those are the places of honor. A king would have his most valued advisors sitting right next to him so he could lean over and talk to them and ask their advice and consult with them. Will you let us sit? with you on your right and left in heaven. St. Mark, who simplified everything, simplified the encounter. He simplified it by leaving out a detail. In one of the other Gospels, I think it was St. Luke, it wasn't them who went to our Lord. They sent their mother to ask our Lord. Why? because their mother was probably one of the group of women who followed the apostles, who cooked the meals, who did the laundry, who mended the socks when they needed to be mended. They were, and it's referred to many times at the, in the gospel, that the women who were at the foot of the cross with the blessed mother, they were the women who were very close and were there and were helping and serving and James's mother, as a woman of means, probably had the means to go out and buy dinner when there wasn't any dinner, and probably had the means to pay for a night's lodging at an inn when it was raining and they couldn't sleep out in a field. So James and John, in the other gospel, send their mother, figuring, well, oh, he's not gonna say no to, to our mother. I mean, she does his socks, he's gonna say yes. To, to her. 
And they sent their mother, but St. Mark doesn't mention that. He says they came directly to themselves. What did they come to do? They came to cash in chips. They came to settle accounts with God. They came to tell God what they had done for him, and now pay back time what you're going to do for me. And when you look at that, you say, ouch, that's embarrassing, James and John, that this should be recorded for all eternity for us to read about you. That's kind of embarrassing. This was not your best moment. Yet, it should be here. Because we should know that probably in all the apostles, there was a little bit a sense of ambition. He's going to do something for us. Look at what we've given up. And don't you and I have a little bit of that in all of us as well? Sometimes, if you listen closely to the way you ask our Lord, sometimes I listen closely and I'm saying, I'm not asking God for anything. I'm cashing in and I'm telling him, you got to do this for me. Um, I don't finish the sentence, um, but if you could, instead of dot, 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 if you knew what I was saying, Lord, you know that I'm saying, because God, I've been there, I've been worshiping you, I've been loyal to you, I'm asking you for something. God, you have to do this for me. I really need this. It's cashing in chips. We all do it. How do I know I'm doing it? When people disappoint me. When I expected a person to do a thing, or say a thing, or act in a certain way, and they didn't. I built it up. I'm disappointed. They didn't give me what I asked them for. Why? Because I thought I deserved it. And sometimes we go through life and we find ourselves disappointed in a response. We're disappointed in what was given. We're disappointed in what was not given. We're disappointed in this person's answer when, when we really wanted their help in something. The disappointment tells us, why are you disappointed? You're disappointed because you wanted something back. You built up your expectations. St. James and St. John built up their expectations and they wanted something back. And our Lord gave them a good answer. He basically gave the answer that a husband and wife give to each other when they exchange their vows, right on that spot over there. He gave them that answer. And the answer goes something like this. I can promise you that the cup that I drink from, you're going to drink from. And what does the cup represent? It represents everything in life that we have to swallow. A good image, because what do you do with the cup? You gotta swallow. Whatever's in there, this is the cup of life. You're gonna swallow what I swallow. And that's what the husband and wife are saying to each other. What, whatever life holds for you, it holds for me as well. I'll sip it, I'll gulp it, I'll swallow it the same as you. And there'll be stuff that's sweet and there's stuff that's bitter. And our Lord said, I promise you that. I will share my cup with you. You will be with me. You'll be at my side. Mm, but don't ask me about who's going to be on my right and left in heaven. That's for God the Father. Your reward will be from God the Father according to your love. God will reward you according to your love. I'm not going to give you that judgment now. God my Father will reward you that way. And they accepted it. James and John understood. It did annoy the other apostles when they were watching this whole thing unfold. The ambition of James and John annoyed them, but it shouldn't have, because it's an ambition that is in all of us. We do it with each other. We certainly do it with God. We look for payback 
from God. I'm a good guy, God. You owe this to me. St. Paul, the apostle, to some degree, must have had this in mind when he wrote his sermon to the Jewish people. And he tells them, we do not have a high priest. High priest, he's referring to the fact that Christ did what the priest in the temple did, only he didn't offer lambs for the forgiveness of sins. He offered himself as the lamb. <clears throat> it wasn't the blood of bulls that was poured out. It was his own blood for the forgiveness of our sins. So he's talking about Christ as the one who saved us and forgave our sins. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. In other words, God can sympathize with our weakness because he himself knew what it was to be tested. He saw it in his own apostles. He saw their weakness. He saw their imperfection. And yet, he didn't send them away. He accepted them with their strength, with their love, with their devotion, with the places where it reached perfection and where the places where it still was very imperfect. I'm looking for something back. He accepted them in their perfection and in their imperfection. And St. Paul says, so we confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for whatever help we need at the moment. In my mind, this whole thing is a meditation on human imperfection. Evidence, even in the saints, because they want us to look, they want us to understand, they want us to continue the struggle. And they show us that even they had to struggle. And the struggle is, in our human imperfection, not every feeling, not every thought, not every response is our best. Sometimes it's not at all. God loves us in our imperfection. Had he sent away James and John, he could have sent away the other ten as well. And he could have gone after all the other disciples and people who followed him. And in their imperfection, he could have sent them all away. Go away, all of you. You know, for whatever problem you got, just go. But he didn't. How patient and gentle he was, accepting the apostles, even in their imperfection. Dot, dot, dot. And I, with the imperfection of others, dot, dot, dot. And I, with my own imperfection. Thank you, St. James and St. John. You kind of made fools of yourself. You held up a mirror. But I can look at our Lord's patience and acceptance, and I can say, God, let me try and do that sometimes. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God. He got not made, consubstantially substantial to the Father. Through him all things are made. For our surrender and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day, according to all his scriptures. He ascended into heaven. Living the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy 
Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Who proceeds with the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism of the gifts of the saints. Blessed be the kingdom of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now and forever, for ages unto endless ages. Amen. The response to each petition will be, Lord, have mercy. For parents struggling to live decent lives and teach their children to reverence and worship God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the protection of those who travel, for the sick, the suffering, for those in captivity, and for their salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the despondent, that they may experience the saving hand of God with deliverance from all troubles, misery, danger, and want, in even the most distressing of circumstances. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the sick of the parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For deceased family and friends, and the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. O oh God, help, save, pity, protect us, who call upon you in faith. For we do rely on the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, imploring St. Gennaro, all the saints, St. James, St. John. We commend ourselves, each other, our whole lives to Christ our God, to thee be glory for ages unto endless ages. Amen. These are the announcements for this month. The last chance to purchase tickets for the October Fest. They will be available after all weekend masses. All souls day enrollment envelopes are available in the back of the church. Religious education classes begin Monday, October 18th. There will be registration for religious ed classes this Sunday, October 17th, from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. in the Parish Center. Morning Mass on Monday, October 18th, will be at 8.45 a.m. Humbles himself to share in our unity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit, contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O oh Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good to the Lord's Holy Church. Again, let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Amen. your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death. By rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. So with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, the hosts, the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. 
Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sanctus, Lanius and Charity in heaven, Gloria in Tua, Hosanna in the Chalcis, Benedictus in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this. All of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim that Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember, brothers and sisters, fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, all who die in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the kingdom of the power of the Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On this day, we told us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O body of Christ, keep me safe. The return of life. Amen. Amen. Do you know what you are asking for? Can you drink the cup?
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Amen. your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.